well, it's time. It's finally time for me to do something that I've been avoiding, to be honest. And many of you continue to request this, demand it even. And so here it is. Here we go. Uh, as you can tell, a little bit more somber of a tone than my other segments, given the subject matter. It's not rainbows and puppies, okay, that we're talking about here. Today, I'll be addressing the hate, the backlash, the people out there who want nothing but the worst for me. <laughs> um, obviously, I'm being silly with my tone of voice, but uh, this should be pretty fun. I've done audience feedback segments before on our members only bonus show but i had some of you requesting me to do it for everyone and so today i'll just be focusing on the hate a few examples of the more negative feedback that is received and i do want to thank my colleague jack for putting this together he had to be the one to go through and scroll through dms and then pick out the low lights and Part of that's because I make an effort. I'm very intentionally avoiding spending a lot of time focusing on the loudest, which is often the angriest portion of people engaging with me or the show. Because I've seen other people in similar positions who have shows, who put out content online, who get sort of fixated on that small, but just loud and aggressive portion of people engaging with them or of their audience. And then that distorts your view of your own audience. So then you think it's composed of people that really majority it's not and you start speaking to them and being really defensive. And so instead I try to mostly avoid that. Interestingly, YouTube comments are often really respectful, even ones that disagree, but the YouTube comments for most of the videos I upload are really good and respectful. And so I do scroll through those more, but Twitter X is a different story and it gets pretty, pretty wacky. And so what we put together here for you is DMs specifically, because if Twitter's bad, people sending you private DMs gets even worse. And obviously to keep it lighthearted, we're not including threats and horrific stuff, just more things I can have something to say on. And obviously I've had them remove the usernames and names. We're not trying to direct hate back at anyone. But before we get into any DMs, here's something that was posted, put together by a guy that spent his valuable time creating a meme uh, of me that has the text on it that says, this is the face of low testosterone, which, hmm, I guess I have two points on this. The first is, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if it screams masculinity to, like I said, spend your valuable time on Canva making a, a insulting art piece to a guy that you don't know and about his testosterone. Just getting a little out of the manly man territory, I guess is how it word it. To speak in terms, maybe this person would understand. And the second thing is, and I say this with humility in my heart, okay? With the utmost of humility, I'm about to say what I'm about to say. But if I do say so myself, it's not the worst photo I've ever taken, okay? So if you're gonna make a meme that's supposed to be an insult, I, there's a lot of not flattering photos of me. And you could even take any moment from my show where I'm like clenching my face or something. But instead, it's this one. I mean, again, it's not too shabby, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, and then moving on from that, there is someone po or messaging, are you paid by the DNC? And this is something that if you ever acknowledge successes of the Biden administration, of Democrats in Congress, you'll get accused of repeatedly. And to me, it is indicative of an unwillingness to imagine for a second, I say to this person who sent this message, imagine for a second that everyone in the world is not exactly like you. Imagine that there's people out there who aren't you and who are different than you. Okay, so once we've gotten our heads around that, you can then realize maybe you might not like me or what I have to say about politics, but there might be an audience of people who does. And the reason I say that is because I think that's premised on two ideas. Obviously, there's the one of you would only say these things if you're being paid Otherwise, you couldn't possibly genuinely, authentically believe the things you say, which is absurd given that 
long before I had an audience that was anywhere close to big enough that the DNC would take any interest in paying me to say certain things. I had the same principles and values about politics. And that is well documented in videos from a long time ago where I cringe watching it, but at least I'm proud of the political views I was espousing. And then the second uh, idea this is premised on is, okay, even if you maybe genuinely believed this, you could never make a living doing it. You could never grow a big enough audience saying this sort of garbage, thinking that the Inflation Reduction Act is good. And thus you have to be getting paid to say these things because there's not really an audience out there that could organically fund this sort of work. And that's the part that gets back to imagine there's people out there that aren't you who maybe will like this. And also you can check the numbers and see that clearly people are positively engaging with the content as well. And uh, the way that this is funded, I'll give you the secret actually. I'll reveal it. Okay. It's people watching YouTube videos and YouTube's ad program plus membership. People getting a membership to support even more. Crazy stuff leaked to the public um, <laughs> and they can't get their mind around that. Okay, then next one. Are you an idiot? Someone asks, which I'm assuming I shouldn't respond back <laughs> DM. I don't think so. 192 House Republicans, they're quoting me now. 102 House Republicans voted against uh, raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Guess you didn't take any basic economic classes. And so they were referring to a post where I called out Republicans for not being willing to raise the minimum wage. And they're saying that you can't have economic knowledge and also believe in raising the minimum wage, which is obviously absurd given that lots of economists think we should raise the minimum wage, not to mention the data we've gone over on the show many, many times showing that, of course, you can't pick any minimum wage. You can't go too high uh, because you could cause way too much short-term pain for the businesses who would have to afford this. But if you find that sort of equilibrium amount that's economically viable, then you can both stimulate the economy, you can, yes, raise the wages of Americans, which is fantastic, while also, and this is something we've seen play out in places that have raised their minimum wage, the businesses in the area can also benefit because now consumers have more money and can stimulate the economy in those different areas and it can be benefiting uh or beneficial for everyone then someone else says shut the f up luke you probably voted for biden which i think that might be my favorite because yes i say that rather often and am encouraging people to do that in this upcoming election as well one person said you're so effing stupid it's beyond comprehension Another person said, how much are they paying you, homeboy? See, we're back to this. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to get some of that money too. I'd ride for Biden for 50K, which it's funny in the process of presumably trying to uh, convey a negative indictment of my character, saying that I'm being paid under the table or something and say what I say, they're revealing their moral failings, <laughs> saying that I would... I would totally be a DNC shill if you could pay me enough. Uh, little do they know, as I just said, that the way they could get paid to espouse the views that I espouse is by building an audience of people who support that work. And then somebody said, hey, Luke, F you. Very um, elegant. Someone has said, nice of you to spread fake news. Someone, ooh, I like this, concise. Not wasting my time, B word. <laughs> uh, then someone says, between us, who do you work for? There it is again. Are you even real? Wow, that's kind of a deep question. Am I even real? There's nothing Biden has done good for this country yet. How can you support that? Who is paying you off? Or are you just a troll? I don't understand how any human being could. And what's funny is I do see people, it has to be people who just saw me on Twitter or something who haven't watched the show, but the very common uh, phrase from people is, I bet you can't name a single thing that Biden's done good, which is hilarious because, again, if you watch the show, you know that's often what we discuss is policy. So, of course, we would be aware of the policies, good and bad, of Biden or why the Republican Party is a policy disaster. And so, with Biden, yes, the American Rescue Plan, the Inflation Reduction Act, the PACT Act, Chips and Science Act, the historic infrastructure law, the largest federal investment in public safety in American history, the uh, historic 
list of gun violence reduction executive orders, the uh, fact that he's overseen an economic recovery that has outpaced both expectations and other countries. We're currently doubling the GDP growth of our G7 counterparts. The crime reduction that we've seen under Biden's presidency, in part because of those investments that I previously mentioned, with violent crime dropping to near more than 50 year lows and uh, generally crime back down to pre pandemic levels or lower. Yeah, there's definitely positive things that we're seeing in the governance of Joe Biden. Uh, then somebody said, do you know how, uh, do you know anything about economics or how the world works when we have Democrats in office ruining everything? Well, economics, when you're talking about Democrats and economics, undeniably economic data show that, uh, for the last century, the economy has performed much better under Democratic administrations than Republican. Then somebody says, you are participating in exactly what is destroying America. Wake the F up. And it's hard to define destroying America, of course, but I think that we could all agree you would want to destroy America if you believed in mm, terminating the Constitution, let's say, just to throw something out. And then maybe you would be someone in favor of destroying uh, the country if you wanted to end democracy. Can we all agree? If you're against democracy and our constitution, probably you're sort of a pro-America destroying. Well, Trump called for the termination of the constitution, a massive fraud this type of magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations, articles, even those found in the constitution. And he also tried to block the peaceful transfer of power through schemes like the fake elector scheme, which if that would have been successful, it would have kept someone in office who lost an election, which would have been the end of our democratic process. So I think if anyone embodies an ambition to destroy the things that make America, America, it's Donald J. Trump, which probably this person supports. I'll leave it there. Let me know what you thought of that. Comment. Uh, be respectful. No, I'm kidding. Send what you want. We'll see.